Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. We'd like to begin by acknowledging... Oh, I've got an echo. Hang on. Oh. Let me make this echo go away. Did it work now? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's start again uh, without the echo. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we stream and create today. We'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, I am here with Johanna. How are you doing, Johanna? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, had a great time yesterday and uh, did some no noodling around uh, with colors and such this morning. So very excited for the shenanigans to to continue yeah it was great so it was kind of like a D, D inspired character creation kit if you were kind of illustrating your character it was really cool i really like the concept yeah. um and we got about halfway yesterday and we're going to finish it off today we've got some exciting stuff so uh i might just share your screen so we can see what we're talking about yeah um, and uh, we can run it through. And I don't worry, I've got all the answers here as well. I don't know if oh, it looks like you've written them in now, which is cool. I have, yes. I was very studious. Yeah, well done. <laughs> in my prep for for the stream, I wrote everything down, and I'll also show you what else um, I've been up to. So, can everyone see my screen now? Uh, yeah, maybe zoom in a little bit if you could, just if we want to read the text. Zoom in. Yeah, all right. Yeah, perfect. So. Here is what we worked on yesterday. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, here is actually what we worked on yesterday. Uh, so this is our dragonkin size large with youthful bodily features um, named Flintstone, and they are 44 years old. Um, so this is how far we got yesterday. I did uh, this morning, just touch up some of the different um, line work areas. I added in the wings and I actually also messed about with some colors. Oh, cool. As you can see here. And um, this is sort of the, the version one of colors. And the way that I then also amp it up to the next level is I will color the outline as well. So here we see the illustration. And the only thing that's changed is instead of a black outline, the outline is kind of the, the purplish blue. Right. Um, and I find that that just, um, since it is all flat colors, uh, kind of makes the illustration pop a little bit more um, than it otherwise would. Cool. And also with the way that I've colored this, I've used one, two, three, four colors, actually. Um, and where you see the variation is just, I've used the multiply um, layer mode, I believe it's called. Blend mode is what it's called. So I've just used the multiply blend mode and done the same color again and again. So if I jump into my layers, you will see that I've drawn the same thing again and again. Mm. Um, and that's how I've done that. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to say hello to uh, everyone in chat. I hope you're having a good time. Um, and if you have any questions about what we uh, did yesterday or um, about anything that we're going to do as we go along with the stream, let us know and we will do our best to answer them and draw at the same time because that's mm. what we do best here. Um, with that said, how about we reveal our next surprise, which is the dice cam. All right. And I'm very we excited get started about dice on cam. today's rolls. All right, let's do it. Yep, dice cam is up. Very proud of dice cam, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is using Johanna's mobile phone and like a whole new connection type. So, uh, dice cam, hooray! Uh, all right, very, very so, high tech. So, what do we roll first? We're going to roll. So, basically, um, we're rolling for attributes um, for op well, not attributes for options of uh, yeah, what Johanna has had have, has there on on the left. You might need to hide Flintstone. Yes, I was just um, now that I've shown off how I have. Uh, constructed them. I'm just going to merge all that into the one layer for now. So the, the things that we'll be rolling for today are familiar, uh, trade, weapon, armor, treasure, and clothing. Cool. Um, and I'm just having a look at the dice cam. Oh, that looks delicious. Uh, and do excuse the, I don't know if you can see my hand because it's a bit of a delay. Um, 
you see the the green screen there in the background as well, which is which that's is all great. Good. That's so good. Um, first time for everything, right? So first time with dice cam, and I think we did a pretty good job. I think it's cool. Um, okay, so uh, how about Flynn? Since this is kind of your character, uh, you decide what role we do first. Um. Well, let's do familiar since it's already up there. The options right. are there, so that'll that'll make it it's nice and simple. It's already up, so that's D eight. So we'll find. Eight. I do believe it's this one. Okay, you ready? First roll let's do of it. the stream. That is a five. Oh, it's gonna have an otter. Okay, right. amazing. Um, so I'm gonna make a new layer and just write these things uh, down. I'm keeping a note um, as well, just so you know. Excellent. And in that case, let's just so we can get them out of the way and moving a bit quickly, because we are doing a lot more, technically a lot more of this stream than yesterday's stream. Right. Uh, how about we roll for the rest of them as well? So let's find the next thing, and that is clothing and or accessories. Mm -hmm. and that is a D20. Oh, that is a six. So we'll have a faded shawl. Faded shawl. Yeah. Okay. Faded shawl. Um, and if at any point we feel like the the character, or the creature is missing anything, we can always re-roll these again to add additional stuff. And then let's see trade. So what do they do as a job? They are a tour guide. Chat, wow. I cannot tell you um, how excited I am. I told Flynn yesterday, and I think I told everyone here in chat as well, um, that tour guide was the one <laughs> that I really wanted because uh, I thought that would just be hilarious. And look at that. With the luck of the dice, That's it is what great. we got. Uh, so this is... Kind of proof that there is no, no, it's all up to chance with these dice rolls and that makes it so much fun. Okay, weapon, let's see. Oh, that went off, off screen, so I'll do that again. And it is a 17 longbow. That's gonna be interesting. I have no idea how I'm going to make that work, but we will make it work. Uh, and then second last one is armor. That's a D12. Let's find the D12. Is this one here. That is a 10. Oh, chain mail. Nice. Chain mails. Trying to look at, think about the hardest ones to do. I think chain mail might be up there. <laughs> look, I definitely should have thought about this before I wrote that down as an option, and I certainly didn't. Um, so that's on me, but it'll make for a fun stream, I reckon. And then we see the last one that we have. I'm gonna use a D10. Let's see. Ah, that'll work. Uh, is treasure. And we get a one, which is a magic flute. Okay, interesting. Magic flute, all right. Hmm. Magic. Sure, that's how you spell flute. Um, all right, so I'm going to lower down the opacity of these. And I'm going to bring up just the line work um, of the dragon. Um, and actually, I'm going to copy it pop that back in there um because this way we can make changes to the line work and then just recolor everything once the the line work is all done again and that's a lot easier than having to worry about where the colors are in terms of layers and what opacity everything is at and everything um so now we can just focus on the lines so how about we start with the otter Okay. So let's see here. First of all, I'm going to be 
smart artist and just look up some quick reference, um, which of course I would have done before the stream, uh, but since this is all up to chance, I did not, because I yeah. could not. Um, all right, let's see. Well, that is adorable. Um, and I might just, actually, I'm not gonna worry about um, airdropping these images. I'm just gonna get going. So I think we'll have our little auto character just here. And now we're off basically. This uh Rough and this running. This is all the um all the prep that we needed to do. And now it's just all about doing the thing. Nice. There's quite a quite a lot to do, of course. So we've got the trade, just to reiterate for anyone that missed it, um, trade is a tour guide, which was definitely the people's favorite because um, of just how outrageous <clears throat> a tour guide as a profession would be um, for this creature. Weapon is a longbow, which Johanna expressed might be quite difficult to do. We'll see. You could always just sling it over the back. Um, you wouldn't do. have to actually draw that much of the longbow, but we'll see. Um, we'll see how difficult I make it for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The easy way out, like hiding the hands behind something or like the feet behind something, or are you going to go yeah. for it? Um, right now, I'm doing the I'm familiar, not. which is like creature that follows you around, I guess. How does that work in D&D? &D? We can nerd out a little bit today. Is a familiar an, another character or is it like a pet that you pick up along the way? Does it, it is, get involved it is more or like is it a steady pet. choice? You, you pick up along the way. Um, I definitely think it depends on depends on the person. It depends also on the the DM as well. Uh, I will say in terms of if they if they're cool with you. Let's see. I'm just going to make sure that you can see it well. And then I might move it around. Um, it depends. Uh, like a lot of the, the things in, in D&D and uh, TTRPGs or just RPGs in general, I find is, well, what what do you want to happen? Um, and it kind of depends on what the uh, the narrator or the, the dungeon master kind of has decided is how things work right. uh, in their campaign. Um, but of course you can, uh, you know, have a friendly chat with them and say like, hey, you know, I think we should all be able to have familiars, even though our class might not necessarily allow it. Mm. Um, and that's just cool, right? And that could be cool. So it very much depends. Um, but in the way that I've seen it traditionally done, anyone... I think, and if I'm wrong, please correct me in the chat. Um, anyone can have a familiar. There's obviously um, characters that you might expect them expect them to have a familiar, like a kind of warlock or a wizard. Um, but I think certainly anyone can have a familiar, and they can do tasks um, on your behalf. Uh, they can take action in battle, mm. um, they can give you um, inspiration, um, which is a mechanic where you get more success on, on your roles than you. Um, oh really? They can give inspiration? I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure they can give um, bardic inspiration or, or some oh. equivalent. Right. Again, it's it's kind of all... Like you got a rabbit and it's like a lucky rabbit's foot or something. There's some sort of canonical. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Basically anything can be done in in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. If you really want it uh, to be done. I was thinking as you were creating this um, otter familiar and we were talking about the longbow before, I was thinking maybe the otter could be holding the quiver or something. Oh, that is a very cute very cute idea I thought so. um just uh just throwing it out there that is a don't very... have to go down that route at all 
very good throw it out there i like it a lot uh let's see just rearranging so i can see chat again um okay now is this the most otter looking otter that you've ever seen uh maybe not um cool. but it is <laughs> it is what it is and with the, the level with one the time, level one otter exactly with the time that we have um i'd say it's a it's a pretty fine otter and um, that definitely doesn't look uh like a, a raccoon or a cat <laughs> um but they're all very similar aren't they so yeah. in this fantasy world cats bred with uh raccoons to create otters so you're gonna see some exactly uh, similarities i'm so glad you remembered flynn um that is absolutely the case um let's see here will i try to make no i will not try to make the feet realistic um, let's see and now let's do some of those lines that are definitely uh, realistic to to otters, um, and I think that's the wrong layer. There we go. That's a little otter friend. Nice uh, otter familiar. I just noticed one thing that I will fix. Just these these thighs weren't doing it for me. Okay, there we go. Almost. <laughs> yeah, good enough. Um, and what I will do as well, let's just, here we go, is make a, on a different layer, just make a little box that it's sitting on um, so it can be placed where it is, which make sure that's in frame, but there we go. Nice. A little pedestal. That, yeah, that is good. Good enough, a little messenger box package thing. Excellent. So that is our <laughs> little otter done for now. Uh, we might touch it up uh, later or, or give it some additional accessories, but for the time being, uh, that's our otter. Now we have a faded shawl for the dragon. So let's get on a new layer. And we'll up the brush thickness. And for anyone wondering, the brush that I'm using is, excuse me, Kyle's Inkbox uh, American Comics Inker. Mm. Uh, it's, it's got a nice big. texture to it. Yeah, I like that it, it's um, it's got the the sort of the crumbly edges, and also it is very monoline. And as you can see here, if I zoom in. Uh, it's got rounded edges, so it doesn't have that transfer um, that uh, other brushes might have. And it's also a solid color, mm. so it works really well for, for sketching in the way that I like to sketch um, and for coloring in and uh, stuff like that. Okay, let's see here. The next thing is a faded shawl. So let's just go in here. And make a little shawl situation. Are you looking up 
actually reference for any of this or I should shouldn't I um <laughs> that was it wasn't a criticism I was just asking you looked up the no I'm gonna for double a, I'm gonna double check that I know what a shawl looks like yeah because I don't know what a shawl looks like is it a scarf is it see. like a oh thing? I was incorrect it is not like a scarf ah. it is more that would have like been my guess it's a single layer, like a one-sided poncho, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. So it is that uh, sort of uh, triangle shape, kind of right. like this, um, but it doesn't, um, it's not like a, what are these called? Scarf? It's, yeah, it's not like a scarf. Right. There we go. Okay, so how, how are we going to do this? I'm going to zoom it out a bit so we can see. I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit of the dragon. So they're getting, getting a bit hipster, a bit of a hipster treatment now with the yep. shawl. Definitely. Um, okay. That. Good thing it wasn't something with a hood because that would have got quite complicated with the two-headed beast. Yeah, now that you mention it, I am actually quite uh quite glad it isn't something with a hood um because i definitely did not consider that and i'm very glad that you did let's here of course it wouldn't be a illustration stream without redrawing the same line a trillion times and we'll call that Good enough. So here, and you'll notice that, of course, I am not uh, coloring in anything right now, and I probably won't do that the stream um, because that's going to take too much of our time, unfortunately. But rest assured, I will uh, finish this and color it in. Uh, outside of the stream and we'll share it maybe on uh, Firefly Friday. Mm. And sorry about that, I just bumped into the mic. Um, adjusting this little special effects light uh, that I had for the, the dice cam. Uh, let's see now, does that look... I'd say that looks enough like a shawl that's on a dragon. Yeah. Um, so we'll say that that's it. Now, this dragon is, or dragonkin, I should say, a tour guide. So right. what? So what why were you so excited for it to be a tour guide? Just because it's kind of ridiculous? Or was there it's another It's a little reason? bit ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think it's also visually very, very funny <laughs> that this big potentially threatening looking creature is actually just really kind and sweet and wants you uh, to enjoy the sights of the local town. Right. Um, basically. So it's just playing with the archetype of something big and scary because this is a large creature mm. um, being actually very uh, kind and helpful even. So let's see what what might a tour guide have? Ba, 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 ba. They will definitely have a. Well, let's start. Let's start small, and we'll go back to the familiar. Which chat? If you have any suggestion um, for names for our familiar. Um, then please that's a good idea let us know in chat but i think the otter first and foremost definitely needs 
a little hat. So tour, tour guide hat with a little flag on it. <laughs> That's perfect. And you know that's going to be a multicolored cap for yeah. sure. And then let's do a little logo of some kind on the hat. Yeah. Good enough. Cool, cool. And going back to the dragon, let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, they would need a badge, right? A tour guide badge to let everyone know that they are indeed the tour guide. So let's make one of those and, and chat again. If you have any suggestions for what makes a tour guide look like a tour guide, uh, let us know because this is definitely the least uh or you could argue the least D, &D thing uh that we've drawn so far mm. so if you have any suggestions of how we can make this work uh i'm all ears oh yeah the badge so it's kind of like a lanyard okay that makes sense exactly um well i think might be hard to draw in, but I think there's an idea around this, the sticks that they hold up, so they tend to hold up, but they might not really need a stick because they're quite large. So maybe that's why they have the job. That could be so. Uh, the lanyard should have two photos and it should be each of the heads. Yes. I can't believe I did not think of this, Flynn. Uh, this. This is why I'm so glad that you're here. It's a special, uh, special lanyard just for our creature. Yep. Special lanyard for our very special tour guide. Let's see here. Excellent. Let's see. All right. So that's that. And then you said uh, one of those signs, right? But I'm wondering if actually maybe we'll do something a bit, a bit cute. And, and Flynn, I'm counting on you to let me know when we have enough uh, tour guide, um, I guess, memorabilia. Uh, mm. on this character here so we have enough time to we could always move on and then come back if we've got time to so exactly we'll do a hat over here one of the horns that i'm sure falls off all the time and the familiar has to go and grab it each and every time it falls and it's probably a point of contention between the two um gives it to the next tour guide like they take turns <laughs> actually i wonder maybe there's a bit of you know good cop bad cop with this tour guide right. and depending on what head or which head has the um the hat that is who is in charge could be interesting mm. um okay and then last thing I think is a clipboard. We need a clipboard. Nice. And then if we can think of anything else, uh, let me know. It's pretty and, solid. Uh, I can add that in. Honestly, I'm, I am actually still a bit baffled that we did get tour guide, which is what I really, uh, really wanted. Um, so that is great. And you'll see as I'm drawing here, I'm uh, changing between uh, 
two different line thicknesses um, and that's just so we get a little bit of, of depth mm. um, into the illustration and make it a little bit less flat looking because obviously we are just using um, lines to communicate um, communicate here and so if it's all just the same line thickness and sometimes it can risk sort of looking a bit a bit messy as opposed mm. to it actually has a character a lot of balance and hierarchy let's see yep. that's that's going to be everything for the the checkboard i think nice all oh, right is this enough of a tour guide for now i think so cool cool then the next thing which certainly i've been dreading just a little bit is the longbow mm. okay so like i did before i'm gonna quickly look up longbow i mean i think it's pretty self-explanatory but just in case yeah so I think of like a longbow kind of strung around the, because we're going to run out of appendages. We only rolled two arms, so we might need that other arm for something else. Who knows? Um, plus you kind of hold a longbow in two hands if you're about to use it, I feel. But who knows? You could put it, you could probably put it in the yeah. other hand. Um, Cause there's quite a lot of action going on with the badge and the shawl as well. So it might there get a bit is. lost. Yeah, and I am mindful that I have created this box uh, for myself here, but what I might do uh, just to uh, make it a little bit easier is gonna pretend that the box doesn't exist uh, for the time being, um, and we'll adjust accordingly if we need to. Uh, okay. Um, longbow let's see well i think you were right on the money with the otter helping with carrying stuff so we're gonna give the otter here the otter the chance to be helpful which i'm sure it really really is and should definitely be paid for um and just isn't um <laughs> the otter is going to be carrying the arrows. So let's... Quiver is actually a pretty good name for an otter familiar. You know what? Unless chat has something better, I think that is what we're going to have to go with. It's pretty good. I think so. It's a nice little double meaning when it's kind of owner. What's the relationship? What would you call it? It's. Uh, it is the the summoner and summoner. the familiar. And the yeah. familiar. So the summoner is uh, has a long bow, and its name is Quiver. It's pretty solid. Let's see, and I can also imagine potentially that Quiver here might have on occasion been at the uh, the the pointy end of some arrows oh poor um, little buddy oh no i mean that uh our buddy here is sitting on the arrow and uh flintstone here is sending quiver into battle so this is this is not a poor Poor Quiver, it is Quiver getting into the battle zone, is how I imagine it. Hmm. Yeah, kind of like if you had a slingshot um, or a trebuchet, you might jump into the trebuchet instead of the 
the usual ammunition that goes into a trebuchet. Well, you put quiver in there. Yeah, I'm sure quiver could balance on an arrow, right? Because it's so small and light mm -hmm. and um, go up to far to reach places. Maybe this dragon can, uh, can't fly anymore. The wings are quite small. Mm. It's lanyards so, uh, weighing, them, weighing them down. Exactly. The, the weight of the responsibility of showing everyone a good time uh, in the realm that they, that they live in, for sure. Let's see. Because I wonder, uh, Flintstone doesn't, I mean, have they always been a tour guide? I think that's a, a good question to ask. Mm. This might be, um, this could be some kind of community service, even. Um, and that they've, uh, let's see. Maybe you led a led a life of unsavory means in now in order to atone. They uh, have become the the tour guide for the city. Mm. All these questions and more, we will not have time to answer today. But I think they're worth asking. Let's see. How are we going for time, Flynn? Uh, we've got about 15 left. 15 left. Okay. In that case, we'll do it super, super quick. Uh, longbow. I'm um, just thinking there are quite a lot of lines um, happening right now. Mm -hmm. We'll wait with that for now because I do want to make sure that we get to get to everything. And I think the next thing to get to is the chain mail. So we'll go over here. We're gonna do the uh, quick and easy, lazy version of, of chain mail. that's cool so you just kind of add some texture in you don't have to draw like a whole yeah, set I of think... armor over the top exactly that's that's what we're gonna do for now and and what will help sort of sell this as being chainmail is obviously also coloring it in uh later because at the moment uh it does quite look similar to the scales um that i've drawn in here um so just adding adding that color in there as well will definitely help just having like it be a, a gray color will help sell this as um as actual chain mail now i would not want to be the the uh, the blacksmith that had to create this ginormous amount of chainmail because I'm sure that would have taken decades, probably. <laughs> So if you're just joining us, we, over some streams, we have created this creature using, you know, based on D and D rules for kind of rolling a character sheet, maybe kind of inspired. Um, yeah. so we have a, <clears throat> a dragon kin, sorry, excuse me, losing my voice. A, um, is it dragonborn or dragon kin? I can't remember what the. Um, the, um, the reference that I used had Dragonkin, um, right. but in 5e, so in the latest D&D, &D, uh, rules, it would be Dragonborn. Right. Okay. So Dragon something, um, and age 44, 
uh, large size. Um, bodily features are youthful, which I think is the hat really shows that off. Mm. Um, it's a tour guide. Weapon is a longbow. Their familiar is an otter called Quiver. Um, the armor that they would wear would be chainmail. Treasure would be a magic flute. And clothing is a faded shawl, which you can see draped over the lovely shoulders of our dragon kin. Let's see. I think... Oh, we have to do these legs as well. Goodness me, so many legs on this dragon. Why Why did we... <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> you set the rules for... It was a good idea <laughs> to roll for arms and legs on this on this creature. What a silly thing to do. Let's see. I think we'll call it a day on that and we'll just say that the uh, the physics of how these this chain mail um, works is something that we're not going to worry about right now. Um, <laughs> All right, then the next thing is the magic flute. Okay. Magic flute, where shall we put you? We have a hand. We do have a hand, but I was wondering maybe um, saving that for the longbow, potentially. Mm. Um, and also since it's treasure, maybe it's something that you'd want to keep hidden. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the quiver And I'm gonna make pocket. Oh, that's cool. Um, on the back. Let's see. Oh my goodness, that was the wrong thing to press. There we go. Um and you know what? Let's just say that the magic flute in all its magicness lives inside of this pocket here. It's like bag of holding, river. right? It's just like, okay, everything yep. everything can go in this bag. Doesn't matter how big, how small. Yeah, let's, let's say that's the case. For the sake of getting all this done on stream, um, so we have done a lot uh, this stream let's just say you know it's all in the um the bag and uh, that's um that's it okay so now that we have pretty much all our items on our character i am going to uh merge uh, all these things i need be merged. I'm gonna not merge them, I'm gonna group them. And then we'll get uh, Flintstone back to the right opacity and we'll turn the opacity down of the accoutrement. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a layer mask on the line work of the dragon and just look and see where the lines used for the the dragon so you're just erasing uh, some of the, exactly some where they the will be visible and where they wouldn't actually be visible right in terms of well they're now wearing a shawl and so you wouldn't see any of these lines because they're covered by clothes. And I am actually going to increase the brush size <laughs> uh, here because I realize it might have been a bit, a bit small to work with. Okay, that is the shawl. Oh my 
almost done. That's quite a cool technique. I like that. So you've done the shawl kind of over the top and then you swap them around and then you can go back yeah. and erase the bits that will not be seen. And then you have both of those elements on different layers, which will make the coloring kind of pretty straightforward. Hopefully, yeah. And it should then just mean that, okay, we're gonna uh, sadly lose, lose a bit of the color in terms of the, the legs here. Because um, if you remember the, the scaly bits that I'm uh, erasing now, they were yellow. So we're going to lose a little bit of that colour, which is unfortunate. Um, but it will mean that what we've done here actually makes sense. And last few bits. And could you let me know how much time we... Um, about seven minutes left, I okay. think, until wrap up. That's plenty. Because um, I did want to have a go at colouring uh, this in as well. Just with very, very simple colours. Yeah. And what I'll I'll do as well is I'll go back and forth and see if there's anything that I've missed and sort of throughout the, the drawing process that is about to begin I'm sure I'll come across things that um, that I've missed and that I need to take care of but that's that's all part of it. Okay, I think that's it. So what we're going to do is turn back the uh, bah, 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 bah. the opacity on all the accessories and just have a little gander. Aha! And just as expected, I've already spotted something that I missed. Just the hand here. And I'm trying to remember because it is important to work non destructively that when I can, I'm creating a layer mask so that I am not um, not erasing uh, right. any of the line work forever. Okay. And I'm gonna say that that's, that's it for that for now. And now when I turn on the colors, we can see that there's some areas obviously that uh, the colors won't be seen anymore um but that's all right so let's just go with a you know do the the chain mail area first because that's our biggest area of color that has changed and again i'm seeing an area that i missed to coloring the chain mail. Exactly. Now, that line work there. Just making sure that I've done the right. There we go. It's the right layer. And this way, much like when I, I did the colors the first time, I'm basically just picking out on the shapes of where these colors are and 
doing a, a sort of a glorified color by numbers. Nice. Just filling in the boxes. And then what I'll do um, when I go into using the layer modes and everything like that and, and multiply is I will then use these blocks of color as my masks. So each of these arms, they won't be an individual mask, but the, the arms, the chainmail bit of the arms will all be in the same layer. Um, and that way, keeping things organized and keeping it non-destructive. Mm. And that way I'll also know where everything is and where everything uh, needs to go. They're looking great. Thank you. This way of, of working, of really just uh, letting fate decide, uh, so to speak, of what um, what creative decisions uh, need to be made. And so if any of you in the chat have enjoyed this too, let us know, because I'm definitely up to doing another stream like this at some point. Um, and I think I might continue to do this in my personal practice. But if this is something you want to see on stream and in the future, let us know and we'll, we'll try to make it happen. Now I'm actually curious, Flynn, do you think this is something that, that you try out doing for your own work? Even though it's not um, necessarily illustration focused um what do you mean doing uh dice rolls to to make your decisions for you yeah i think so i think it can be fun like live on stream it kind of forces you to have to do everything <clears throat> every everything live um it's not a lot that i do that doesn't require reference though so there'd be a bit of like off-screen research i think involved so i have to figure out how to tighten that up for myself because mm. it's not so much like when you were looking at the otter you could kind of look at a whole bunch of pictures of otters and you're like oh okay it's kind of the tail they kind of look like this they kind of yeah i looked whatever. at one picture everyone yeah <laughs> whereas i think if it was like design based you kind of want a smorgasbord of different versions because you don't want to kind of you not really want to reference one design i think Mm. Or you kind of, it's, it gets close to kind of copying, not too much, but for a live stream, you want a, cap, a couple of sources, maybe some non-design sources and things like that. Yeah. Um, I might have, have to adjust the, the parameters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A bit more. Yeah. You, or, or you could kind of start with a bit of direction first and then choose a door, I guess, to open. Yeah. It could work. Um, might be something worthwhile trying mm. so you can uh <laughs> feel the the excitement that comes with having absolutely no uh autonomy <laughs> in making <laughs> uh creative decisions because it was actually it has been quite fun yeah um let's see here well we've only got about a minute left um a minute left well how about you all know what this is probably going to look like in the end. Um, <laughs> so let's just remove the color um, and bring it back so we can see see it all again. So this is without having written down uh, the steps that we rolled. Our um, our little character. It's very cool. I think it worked out quite well. Yeah. I like it. If you ever play D&D &D with someone, you're going to have to, like, illustrate all of their <laughs> Oh, yeah, for characters. sure. I mean, that's that's definitely something I would do um, voluntarily. Right. Um, this has been uh, wonderfully fun, and um, I will make sure that I show it once it's finished. Yeah, please do share it. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. And thank you, Johanna, for um, creating our creature. It was really fun. We had the dice cam going. Um, 
like the choose your own adventure kind of randomness of the whole thing. Loved it. Thank you everyone for joining us and right. catch you on Friday for oh, yeah, Friday. Firefly Friday. Firefly <laughs> Friday with Johanna and myself as well. We will see you there. Okay. See you there. See Bye. You. Bye. Thank you.